This is Off Planet Radio. Welcome once again to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. Um, sort of enjoying the fact that tonight I'm sitting here with a party of three other people whom I happen to admire. And we're going to dig into some really interesting material. Um, but I'm going to let Emily introduce the guests and I'm going to let her introduce the subject matter because I'm just the producer. <laughs> All right. So uh, with us tonight, I'm, I'm, for the, I'm glad Randy's able to join us for one of these. Um, but with us tonight are the Crimmies, Chris and Steve. And this, I think, technically is part five in our sacred geometry series, but this one is a little bit different because all of the others have been more educational on terms, in terms of the, the, the shapes, the structures, how to do them, what they mean, and the various sort of uh, arts and things that, uh, are ref that these geometries are reflected in, in cultures or, you know, throughout time and across the world. Um, but tonight we're going to take some of the things we learned and actually apply it to, um, something phenomenal that we're kind of watching being constructed in front of our eyes. And that is the city uh, known as Astana, Kazakhstan. Uh, it's actually now called Nursultan, but I don't like that. I, for some reason, I look at it, it, Astana seems to suit for me what it is better, but technically it is now called Nursultan. So this show will be on uh, the sacred geometry of Astana, Kazakhstan. And uh, we're going to go through some of the history of it, some of the geometry, some of the buildings and, and whatnot, and that will be the first hour. And then in the second hour, we're going to go super woo into the light spectrum and light and color spectrum of Astana and what this place may actually be. So here to get into this wild and uh, woolly subject with us, Chris and Steve Krimi, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Well, if that doesn't make you want to sign up with Patreon to support <laughs> yes. these guys, what would? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're happy to be here. We've been, we've been, I don't know, we've been messing with this city for a long time, uh, without obviously having been there, and um, we it's and lucky. we still can't figure out what the hell's going on there. But at least we can talk about you know the the, the artifacts and the and the history and you know and come up with some plausibility. But that's like for so many years. Our friends always thought that we had gone to Tibet, that you went to Tibet, right? <laughs> because we talked about Tibet so much, right. they thought that we went there. So it's going to be a similar thing with this. So. But you, you've been there in your other travels, right? Perhaps. Like, not yet. And, and probably, and I'm not 100% convinced yet that Astana is actually a place, at least at this time, that you can go to through normal means of travel. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Oh, but, Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Magic <laughs> yeah. City. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting, too. But one, one other thing, a psychic many years ago, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, had. Uh, you know, I, we have neither of us oh. have experience of past lives, but just just for fun, this person said that we had been lived in a nomadic tent on uh, in in Mongolia. In, in, Mon in Mongolia, which is right next door. This is all huge Asian steps. It's all connected. They're all Turkic peoples who live in yurts, and apparently we lived in a yurt our whole lives, and we had nineteen children, except our <laughs> genders were split. Wow. Can you imagine? No our, wonder we don't want kids. But our genders are switched, so like, yeah, so we're kind of done with the kid thing. Which is <laughs> oh, you're the one with you're the one with the stretched uterus. That's oh, it, that's, <laughs> it. that's it. Well, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, I know. Us, people forget us guys went through that too. How about well, that? It stretches all the way around to my butt. So, <laughs> so, Boy. so, so right. maybe, so maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some connections you know with, with us and for us um so anyway it's like it's, so yeah so you said nur sultan which means um the sultan of light nur and you are is the persian word of light and it's named after the um up until recently the only president of kazakhstan uh nur sultan nazarbayev is his name who uh, who is actually goes back to the soviet union he was the governor 
or a prime minister mm -hmm. as, when it was a uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. Mm -hmm. And he actually made the transition then into becoming the president. Um, long story short, there were a lot of oil dealings during the Bush administration. And, uh, and in fact, there is a thing called Kazakh Gate where he was uh, um, you know, accused of all sorts of bribery. In fact, it was at the time, it was the largest bribery scandal in the, in the, in the country's history, in the, in, our, in the US country's history, because there are US people involved. Um, so it has a, a real interesting uh, background. It was, it's the largest landlocked country in the world. And if you look at it on a map, it is, it is freaking enormous. It's a huge country. Um, it um, and it being landlocked and very very you know it's it's step like so it has a long nomadic tradition um, and it's gone it's undergone under the Soviet Union a number of very serious traumas all right mm -hmm. so the worst of which being is that all of their nuclear testing was done in a section of Kazakhstan that's approximately the size of Belgium so it's a pretty huge area and what the Soviets were doing at that time were uh, allowing, um, allowing the nomads to be in proximity of all these tests to see what would happen to the people. And what happened to the people is what you would expect, all sorts of genetic deformities, um, Can just- Cancers. Cancers, or just, just, you know, just horrific things. So that's a, um, a very depressing video out there if, if, if you care to find it. Um, so there was that trauma. Also, you know, part of the uh, Bolshevik, uh, you know, socialist aesthetic is that, you know, being a nomad is a lower level of, of human than, than being, you know, a, a you know, fine functioning uh, city dweller within the Soviet system, being, a, you know, being a, um, you know, a person who is integrated into the state. So um, what they did was, you know, get as best as they could all the nomads off of, um, you know, off of their tents and their nomadic ways and pull them into cities, you know, having, you know, their fine, fine, fulfilling factory jobs and, uh, and other mm -hmm. things in the Soviet Union. Uh, the other thing going on in uh, Kazakhstan was the space program. So uh, that was also, I think, because of the, the flat plains if um, if you recall in the in the early space exploration days, you know uh, the U.S. always landed our astronauts uh, in the ocean, but the Soviets uh, always landed theirs on land. And Kazakhstan, being the huge, you know, vast plains, that's where they did that. So um, in this particular city itself. I don't know if you want to move into the the next. Well, the, so the, and there's a there's a there is a prehistory which, um, if you want to go into like those pictures, they're kind of interesting. There's these old um, what are called rings, ironwork, uh, Iron Age rings, and things like that, um, petroglyphs, uh, and these sort of you know kind of Nazca plains kind of uh, uh, things written out in the landscape that some of them are very old. That's called the, um, the Bestamsko ring. That's about 800 BC. There's a, uh, something that resembles a step pyramid, but nobody's really sure what it is. Um, I guess, you know, basically what happened is, um, is that uh, most of this went out of memory um, with the nomadic peoples. And, and also the fact that, you know, there was a huge migration from the whole all those Turkic areas into what is now Turkey, um, starting uh, may, maybe around 700, 800 or so, you know, then they became a threat. That's what they eventually took down the Byzantine Empire. Um, and I like to, and if you go to the next one, uh, there's the one with the three sided ones. Real with, quickly, real quickly, just that last one before we move on that you had up there. I have yeah. a. Uh, frequently occurring remote view, like a sort of imp just uh, impromptu remote view that kind of something I'm looking at behind my eyes on a very frequent basis that looks almost exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. So, and, you can, and you can see from the, the graphic on the bottom, 200 meters, it's, uh, you can say, it's about, it's probably about a good 
uh, 600 meters, so, so maybe close to half a mile on, on each side so of that this, square. So is this just ruins that... Um, well, these are like, holes like that leavings? this is what it looks like. We don't, I'm, I'm do not sure holes? what they know. They're just uh, holes in the landscape. Holes? Of a design, of whether it's a design like the Nazca Plains or whether it was something constructed there. And in the center here to the left, what do you those know are, what that those, is? That looks like a building of some sort. So it's out. okay. Yeah, so that design, I see it a lot, and it looks similar to what a pyramid would look like if you're looking at it from That's overhead. Right. Well, it exactly. also looks a lot like the God's eyes that, like, we used to make them in camp when I was little. They were the Indian oh, yeah. kind right. of art, right? Mm -hmm. they, they look like that. When they, you know, it could look like a kite, you know what I mean? Like some different, but it also is a crude version of, a, of obviously like a cross and some of the things we've discussed in previous with like right. the, the four pedals and the reverse the knights templar kind of cross right so right right we did talk uh, these, about these that. things are all uh, like those things all kind of come up in visions to me related to this thing that i've been looking at this behind my eyes on a frequent basis for more than two years now two to three it's very years. archetypal sure mm -hmm. yeah sure. and that looks like a road goes right through it mm -hmm. But yeah. these are just holes in the ground, so there's yeah, no well, something uh, like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. This is. I'm just. You know, this is just a quick yeah, view really. that that there is this sort of archaic aspect mm -hmm. to the Kazakh history, and, and it's not something I'm really you know well versed in. But and I think the next the next uh, uh, ones are kind of interesting with the three sided ones, and anyone who's mm -hmm. played with um, uh, there's there's a particular the Sicilians. My my ancestors have a particular deck of cards, and that triform. Mm -hmm. Some people are calling it a three-way swastika. Um, is actually the symbol on the uh, on the, on, the, on the Sicilian deck of cards. Huh. And it's also it's also connects uh, connects back to Tibet. Actually, it's a, it's a it's a form of a dorje too. So it's mm -hmm. a it's a power symbol. It's a solar system symbol. And again, these symbols like the swastika. You know, when you have that, it, you know, the movement is implied within mm -hmm, it. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a it's a two dimension mm -hmm. of a, of a of a three or or four dimensional aspect of being. Well, imagine what kind of vortices you get when you twirl that. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. Do we know what this is on the ground? What does that represent in terms of a structure or formation? Right. Well, I think it's just a marking on the ground. Okay. Like I, I think it's it's all that I think it all is. It wasn't. It's not the ground plan of a structure it, when chris was saying what it, about the imagine the vortices it makes or the energy field it reminds me of these new toys that kids play with called that's right. fidget spinners that yes. came out a couple of years yeah, ago it really right. does. yeah yeah and, 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 and for autistic children yeah and off to the upper like right of that form there's a kind of there's those circles but there's one of them that are looped together looks kind of like an infinity symbol Right off right, to the right. upper right corner, but yeah, those fidget right. spinners are interesting. They do use those to calm autistic children. Mm -hmm. They use the, you know what I mean? It's pretty. Um, I mean, it was weird how those things popped up and just went oh, everywhere yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Are these um, land markings in proximity? Or they just, no, I don't know. I don't know. There are different areas of Kazakhstan. Okay. I said Kazakhstan is huge, and these are the things yeah. that they've been okay. um, unearthing. They've been unearthing a lot because the Soviet Union, of course, buried. You know, they're they're uh, you know what the Soviets do. They they bury history because they don't want history. You know, they they want they just want you know people to be engaged with the Soviet plan in the future. It's always about the, you know, about moving towards the, the Soviet it's idea. It's always about progress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You know, whereas, you know, and progressives. Past, yeah. Yeah. Right. About leaning forward. Right. Like, yeah. That's, right. Yeah. And the, um, and the next picture is, is what some people are thinking is a step pyramid. And that's, they're guessing that's between 1000 and 3000 BC. Originally they were thinking maybe it's, uh, concomitant in time with the Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. Um, if that's exact, if that is indeed what it is, it's uh, there's you know it, no one knows really whether it's that or whether it was a palace or a tomb or you know it could be any, any number of things. It also uh, has that God's eye kind of look um, to but it. There's or, no, yeah. Oops, I think we just had a. There's been a lot of interference on on uh, Zoom this week. A little blip, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm, guessing, that... I'm guessing lots of people are using Zoom now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so anyway. that was, what I was saying was that also has that same look from a, like, of a pyramid from above or a god's eye 
or a kite kind of thing with the right. sort of cross sections through it and then the you know the diamond or the square around it but i'm know? just wondering if that, those cross sections are archaeological delineations yeah. it looks like it's part of a dig yeah possibly yeah yeah yeah, the, the, yeah those grass parts is part of a dig where they, ah, yeah, yeah. they mark out every you know when you do an archaeological dig you have to completely delineate delete right. everything where you found everything to make so on and so forth so okay. so yeah so that's just a little bit of its history and then the the, the city was originally called akmolinsk and um sadly uh getting back to the trauma uh there was a place called the Akmalins Camp of the Wives of the Traitors to the Motherland during the Soviet Union. And more than 18,000 women were, uh, were, held, uh, were arrested and 8,000 served time there. And um, 1,500 of them gave birth from, uh, from their time with the guards there. So, um, so that was a place where the Soviet Union were bringing you know, so so there was the, the men would be going off to the gulag, and I guess if the women supported them in any way whatsoever, they uh, became traitors also, and uh, were were sent to this place, which is on this on the, you know, on the city. And do we know uh, what do we know what came of the children of these women in the and the, their? Uh, I'm assuming that some of them were obviously raped by the security guards. Exactly. That's how this happened. So, do we know what became of these children? Uh, they were orphans. orphans of, well, they probably stayed with their mothers and, were, okay. you know, became part of the state. Probably I guess, but I don't. The... I don't know. I don't know the full story. It was closed in 1953. Okay. Uh, hmm. um, so uh, the next picture is, is is of and originally it was a Cossack fortress called Akmalinsk, and I, I gave a, a, an image of that just to kind of show that it is a star fort. For those uh, for those who are into um, star forts, so that star fort, I, I don't know whether that's at the bend of the river where all the main buildings are now, but there's a you know a particular river that runs through the middle of the city. So um, so that's just you know for those who are interested in. Uh, well, in it also is reminding me that the the current capital or the palace the. Uh, President's Palace is also situated in a very similar right. way on a river. Right. Uh -huh. You'll see that later. And Akmalinsk means something like White Fortress or something like that. All right. So, and then the next picture is, is, um, is the entrance to that memorial. Wow. For the, for the women. With, so there's a, there's a stargate with literally stars on it. Yeah, it's, it's right. you know, they turned it into the Space Force emblem. It's literally a star gate. I mean, like in every sense of the word. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the um, the the see so the next picture is a picture of uh, Nazarbayev and Trump. So you get a picture of Nazarbayev. So he's the uh, obviously the one on on your left. Um, so he's so he's considered the visionary of the city. So uh, of interest is um, this book that came out a couple of years ago, and Freeman had this guy on, and his name is Frank, Fra Albo. Frank Albo. And he wrote a book called Astana, what's the subtitle, Chris? Architecture, Myth, and Destiny. So I read the book, and there's really excited about the title and the subtitle, and it's an absolutely drop-dead gorgeous picture book. Um, but it turns out the person who wrote the book, and it was unfortunate because I think Freeman had him on before he read the book. Um, so he really couldn't talk to him as I would love to have interviewed him if I was any good at interviewing. Um, but he's, he's a complete shill for the Kazakh government, government state. And it's all about this guy, Nazarbayev, being this unbelievable visionary, trying to, you know, uh, building this, this city. So the city itself, what was it like before, I got to bring Chris into it, what was it like before um, it was built? It was really only started in uh, 1991. They just picked this place oh. and decided to move the capital oh, there. Oh, right. So it was, it's seemingly arbitrary and, and very perplexing for most people. Why did they choose this site? Because it's in the middle of, in the summer, a marshy plain, and in the winter, Siberia-like conditions. Mm -hmm just horrifically windy and bitter cold and second coldest capital uh, in the world 
yeah, mosquito ridden in the summer. Why would you even choose this spot? Brutal winds. But that's what they did. They chose it. And in 20 years, they really constructed the Disneyland of capitals. So, yeah. you know, go on ahead then. You're right. So that's the thing to remember. So they've taken, so, so they've taken this city and they're building it out of a tabula rasa. Mm -hmm. and all, but, but with this history behind him, of you know of of this sort of um longing for the nomadic history of the people all right and the kazakhs don't even make up or or, or about half of actually the kazakhs are about half of the population of kazakhstan there's another minority group and then there's uh, ethnic russians still there too so so you have this these people drawn away from their roots, like you know, what do we do? The native, what, what did the uh, the colonists and the uh, the early uh, members of this country, you know, they, you take the Indians away from their land, right? That's the first thing you do because that was their connection, that was their spirituality. Um, they did the same in Australia. You take them away from where they live, and you know, and then all of the the horrors ensue from that. They they lose their connection with their spirituality because they it's a it's a land and sky based um, spirituality. Right. So right, so this is so this is um, uh, on what you do. So there's this trauma in the background. So is this? It's just sort of a little background to see why would they build some of the buildings they built um, in this country? If if for example they're trying to reimagine a world and 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 and, and but but connecting it with a past, but a past that they've basically invented. You know, so that's why, you know, you don't have the traditional stuff, but you have this sort of disnified architecture, which we'll, we'll get to soon. Um, and then, um, so that's him with Trump. I have a question. Is that the president there, is he typical of what a Kazakh, someone from Kazakhstan looks like? Yes. Yeah. So yeah so, I, yes. Yeah, like a plains yes. person, you get the Mongol tribe. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's sort of like a. Company, yeah, you know, I was going to say that too. He looks Mongolian. The, the Asian yeah. sort of influence. Asian. Yeah, and yeah. Yet, yeah. With that the, very round, as Robert would say, Cancerian face, like moon-shaped face, they have. Yeah, it's uh, the only person I can think of that I'm aware of from Kazakhstan is. Uh, there was a gymnast named Valery Lukin, and people may know his daughter, Nastia Lukin, won the Olympics in 2008, competing as an American. Um, but they, he looks almost exactly like that. I mean, he's kind of a, an unusual character. Like, he was the first gymnast ever to complete a triple back on the floor, which only mm -hmm. a few people have ever done since then. He had this sort of uh, otherworldly kind of spatial awareness uh, a likely candidate for some type of secret space program, <laughs> right? Like very interesting kind of guy, uh, but right. um, he looks almost exactly like him. It, this, the face shape and, and the features and the size and everything, it's kind of interesting, yeah. Right. Yes, very small, yes. yeah. But a deep set eyes. And there's one, there's actually a Kazakh, a Kazakh tennis player, woman, she got to, I think maybe the round of 16 in the, in the Australian Open. Which girl is it? I, would, I can't remember her name. Mm. There's so many. There's so many tennis players now from the so former Soviet and former. Yeah, but this she like, was from Kazakhstan. But she was at, But yeah, but she struck. You know, she stood good. out because she was from Kazakhstan, and she had the yeah. same kind of kind of face. And I was, you know, I was just yeah. I was just surprised to find someone from Kazakhstan playing tennis at that level. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. So um, and then I guess the next picture is actually the flag of uh, of Kazakhstan, which is. Again, so this is going to tie back in not only to the old mythology, and that's going to get into the first building we look at, um, but also into the the new connection with with masonry, and in and and then I'm going to leave you know, and I still really haven't come to a decision whether it's the positive masonry, the negative masonry, or or both. Okay. Um, but the the sun has thirty two spires um flames and 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 uh and the number 32 shows up over and over again um and so you can look at it as the 32 being 32 degrees of masonry the sun the 33rd degree of course is one that you get um invited to you know you don't you don't you, you can't achieve that that um 
that and then degree. Is the reverse the twenty three like they have in the skull and bones? Well, right. Well, the twenty three is is yeah. So you can invert it the thirty two to the twenty three. You can always play with numbers. The golden eagle or the simmer bird um, is is carrying the sun, and that gets into the first building we're going to look at. So we can talk about that then. And the the pattern on the left, um, according to uh, the standard interpretation is is the um the handicrafts um the the folk arts of the kazakh people so that's what they have in there all right so the first building that they built now what they have and and we'll show this later is, is all these buildings are arrayed along a, a, a mall very much like washington dc and there's a presidential palace at one end and on uh, this tower. So if you're going to make, um, make a comparison to DC, um, this tower is going to be representative of the Washington Monument. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we're talking about um, capitals that are um, emblematic of the New Jerusalems, right? So there are four in, in relatively recent times, um, completely generated, we'll just call them Masonic capitals, structures laid out, everything. So one is Washington, D.C., uh, Brasilia in uh, Brazil, and Canberra in Australia. So you've got two, two in the uh, Northern Hemisphere now, and this would be the fourth, the newest of them. So, so that... That building is interesting too. Like when I look at that, it makes me think of a couple things. Obviously, there, it reminds me a little bit of the Space Needle. It reminds me a little mm -hmm. bit of the Epcot Center, right? They have that mm -hmm. thing that's, that's outside right. of the Epcot Center. Mm -hmm. But if anybody has watched Westworld, it also reminds me of these pearls that have all of the information stored on them that are used the, that you see in the last couple of episodes of the second season that Bernard is putting in his pocket, and they're trying to sort of get. This is where basically all of the information about the not only the hosts but the guests and everything are kind of stored it looks exactly mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. there, it's a little bit different markings on there but the same color and it's kind of interesting and it's it, it looks like the rolex you know insignia um you know it looks like a, a crown with a dome it's really an interesting an interesting it's also a disco ball yeah it, yeah. That's, that's, that's it, right. it gets yeah and it gets more interesting to go along right so there so Funny. So there's a mythology that this is supposed to represent, right? So this is supposed to be, so the, the myth is that there's this tree so that the white part is a, is a poplar tree. And uh, that there is, and that this particular bird, this cosmic bird that some, that's called the simmer, um, lays a golden egg in the branches of this uh, poplar tree. And it's called uh, Baiterek. Right, so of course, anything, one time you see a tree, you, you think of the Axis Mundi, you think of the tree of life, that sort of thing. Yeah. All right, and so the mythology that this is a purportedly based upon is that this bird lays its egg and every, then, then this, uh, this sort of basilisk or, or, or snake from the underground comes up mm. and eats the egg and this cycle goes on and on. And so what happens is nothing you know, the, the, the world doesn't continue, the manifest, you know, the manifestation does not occur, all right? This is a, a type of myth that actually goes back to, um, to Gilgamesh, to the Rig Veda, there's the battle between Vritra and, um, and Indra, Vritra the dragon, and what happens is that these, uh, you know, the, this particular kind of uh, demon must, must be overcome for sometimes they say the waters to really be released or sometimes they say for the cows to be released in other words for manifestation for life to continue mm -hmm. all right so this is this is a cosmic process that really goes on moment to moment within us to allow the next moment to be the previous moment has to die that's one way of looking at it okay so this hero comes up and and uh and and kills the snake and the um And then as a, uh, as, a, as a gift to the hero, the, uh, the cosmic bird takes the hero onto a ride up to the heavens. And we see that, you know, uh, that particular motif going on you know, <laughs> about the, um, the, uh, the midnight ride of Muhammad, which is one of the, which is from actually 
from the Dome of the Rock, where that mosque is, that contentious mm-hmm. mosque is. Um, and he gets, he gets on, on this particular um, sort of mythological creature, takes Muhammad up to the throne of, of, of God. Called the Burak, right? Uh, the Burak. The Burak. Right, B-U-R-A-Q, interestingly enough. So, um, so this motif goes on and is actually a story also from the Epic of Gilgamesh called the Tale of Etana, which is kind of interesting. So that's very close to Astana and a giant bird. Um, again, over here overpowers a snake and, uh, and then lifted up to heaven on an eagle. So this goes back to Gilgamesh, which is, I think, 2200 BC. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, little fuzzy, but at least a long time ago, the earliest literature that we, um, that we admit to, though I think the Vedas go back further. Um, so th- so that's, the, that's the kind of the structure of the story. The tower itself is... Um, so this gets back into the measurements, or we start to get into the measurements, because the, the measurements they give out for everything are in meters, right? So they say this is 97 meters tall, which represents 1997 when they built this, and the city was founded, okay? So this is what gets let out. But what other people have done is you, you have to go back into the... To, um, there's no, like if you're a sacred geometer, you don't like meters. Why? Because meters are, are, are an invented distance. Mm-hmm. All right? So they come later when people had quote unquote accurate membership measurements of the earth and they divided those measurements to, uh, to get, you know, these standards, meters, centimeters, things like that. But the earlier measurements, the, you know, the, 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 the foot, etc. Um, the yard, right, the yard was based on fingertip to fingertip. The foot was based on the foot. The palm was based on the palms. So they were all based on, on human measurements. So everything that was created has a resonance with the human being. The metric system does not. So sacred geometers do not like the metric system. All the distances that they give out for everything here is in the metric system. But what somebody did was converted those back into the ancient, uh, what's called metrology, right? The ancient meter uh, measuring systems. And so those yield the more interesting numbers. So, so feet, yeah. And the other thing with the metric system is to make it base 10, whereas, you know, our system is base 12, 12 inches to a foot, you know, uh, whatever, 60, 60 seconds to a minute, et cetera. We have different base systems. So it says to me that there's something that, that someone the, of these architects actually understood what they were doing right. because they were embedding those significant numbers into the, the architecture of these buildings, yet hiding it behind the meter system. Right, right. And so this is why, this is why we think the author of the, of the book we were talking about is full of shit, because he basically says, oh, you know, the, all these numbers are by accident. They really didn't know they were using any Masonic, you know, kind of ancient building codes. Um, they just, you know, it's just all kind of accident. But, but here they are. Yeah, really? You know, they, like, they, they didn't know, but they showed up at 100% of the sites, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I almost choked when I listened to the interview because he's saying, I talked to all of these architects and believe me, none of them knew, none of them knew about masonry. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that you can get to that level, to a world-class level of being an architect and not know about mas- Masonic principles. I think there's one way it can happen. What's that? Well, there's probably a couple um, that the, these things aren't completely human. These these architects or these the creatures are not completely human, or they're under mind control, right? And so they are trained in an art that they don't understand. So they don't understand that it is masonry, right? Because I, I can I guess I can allow for that. Yeah, but I'm, 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 it's still a jaw dropper for right. me that you totally. can be yeah. there and right. not. And, and the architect behind a lot of these buildings, and, and it would take us too far afield, is a guy named um, Robert Norman Foster, who's, interestingly, his three names, like Ronald Wilson Way, Reagan, are all six letters apiece. Um, he shows up, uh, he's, he's done a lot of these buildings. So he's, he seems to be, he's did like the Gherkin in, um, in London. He did the, the Apple uh, Corporation ring. So there's he's no done, way he can't know. He no, it's in every one of his buildings. No, he know he knows exactly what he's doing. 
yeah. and he's very good at it. So this building, all right, so the, so the egg itself, the golden egg is 72 feet across, all right? So 72 feet is a huge cosmic number. Um, cosmic year. One of the, one of the, yeah, one of the, well, it's, and uh, just for example, it's 72 uh, years is one day in the great cosmic year, which is the complete procession of the equinoxes, which is, um, it's called the platonic years, 25,920 years. If you um, divide that up into months and days, it comes into 72 years, which, so one day of the cosmic year is actually, you know, the average span of a human life, okay. which, is, which is pretty interesting. Um, so I think there's another picture of this too, if, if, if you want to pull it up next, uh, just to have a little change of pace. Um, but the other number that comes up with this building with the height, so it's 273 medieval royal feet high. And 273 was not a number that I'd come across all that much in, in my years of working with sacred geometry. Um, but a two, 27.3 days is a sidereal month. So that's a, that's a, a month having to do with, with the stars. And, and it's, it's, since it's kind of new to me, I really, I won't get too much into, into explanation because I can't do it. That's a good reason. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but the number 273, so the earth, the gravity ratio from the earth to the sun is 273.1. Um, the menstrual cycle is 27.3 days. Uh, the moon is 27.3% of the earth. So 273 is a number that encodes um, relationship between the earth, the moon, the sun, and the stars. All right. So again, which is a perfect number if you're going to build an Axis Mundi or, 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 or something like that. So, that so, the, so the number of that building, the height of that building um, completely you know, uh, clicks on to that. Okay. So I think we have a, a shot of it at night. Randy, are you having trouble with that? Do you want me to pull my... Yeah, yeah, I'm have. well, I'm just having... Hold on, let me stop this. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the graphics don't come up the way you want them to. All right, let me see. That's yeah, just I problematic. Tried to scale down the images so they wouldn't be too large let me see if i can it, it okay. rotate Put there we the go screen, are we yeah. still in astana which which file which folder are we in with this hold one on. yeah the first one hold on i'll have it in just a second here. okay yeah um here we go so this is just a nice shot of it at night you can see the the you know the other yeah. buildings um, deep in the background there, it's kind of hard to see. I don't really have a shot of it, but it's the, it's the, the, the gas and electric building. And again, all of this is built on oil money. Yep. Yeah. All this is built on oil money, um, oil and gas. Um, so, um, the other, oh, the other thing about this, about the, the, um, the myth, there's also a Sufi story. So the Simmer is the name of the bird and there's a famous story, um, called the Conference of the Birds. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's, a, it's one of the more famous uh, Sufi stories. And it's about these 30 birds who set out to find the simmer. And they go through all these travails. And when they find the basically going over these, again, the seven level initiation, they go through seven valleys. They find the simmer on Mount Kaf, which is their mystical mountain within Sufism. And, um, the, the, the word simmer means 30 birds. So the, the 30 birds find themselves, you know, find out who they are. So that's what the Sufi tells about. And I think that's also, um, it would be nice if, it's, if it was in, encoded in the, the background of this. Mm -hmm. So the next picture is, 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 we have two pictures coming up and those are what's inside the sphere. When you go up there, what do you find? It looks a lot, sort of, a lot like Las Vegas at night there. You know what I mean? Like sort of a combination well, as you noted, Disneyland in Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. As you noted earlier, it's very colorful. So the, mm -hmm. the color seems to play a, a prominent role, which what? you would imagine in a, in a, you know, in a very dry, plain, right. cold, windy, nothing there. Color is really important to these people. Yeah. So, so this, you can see this 
uh, pointing out down down the uh, the mall, which is like again replicated against the the Washington D.C. mall. So that's supposedly the hand of the president Nazarbayev, um, in in gold, and people go up there and they put their hand into the into the gold. And it's it's actually very large, and for a small man, I'm kind of doubt that that's actually no, his, it's, it's his palm size. But Chris has some interesting theories about that. Let's hear them about the this about the way. hand and the uh, and the whole the whole thing about the sucking of the energy. Oh right, so that you know when you do that, you're you know you're putting well. That was my first I, thought. I yeah. wouldn't use the word sucking, but perhaps you're adding your energy to this whole construct. And it enters into you. It's and it, everything is reciprocal. So yeah. when you're giving your energy, you're also you know receiving energy. Yeah. And then uh, I guess we can talk a little bit later when we come to the presidential palace. Um, it occurred to me one day. You'll see the similarity. It, it's like a combination of the White House and our Capitol building, only with a blue dome. Mm. And when I was looking at it one day, it occurred to me that that is like an energetic line to our Capitol building. Yeah. And, and it just didn't feel like it was a healthy connection, uh, that perhaps it was siphoning off the same as this might be, just siphoning energy right. from the United like States. Like there's a vein of energy that connects them and it's kind of yes, able to, what I think of when I look at that, that way to me. what I think of when I look at that, it looks like it could be some sort of futuristic, simultaneously futuristic or ancient kind of tech I'm thinking of in yeah. Fringe when Peter puts his hand in that tech and clamps right. on, and that's, that's able right. to open up the right. passage. Like the, the, basically, to me, it feels like almost that there's some sort of energetic gate or portal or dimensional crossover there that needs a specific vibration or frequency or resonance in order to work. Like my guess would be, if the right person put their hand in, that would start to sort of spin around. Would the right person thing. that put their hand in that be a giant? Oh the yeah, size of that a tartar, a tartar. Big, it could be a, sh a short giant, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there are any other pictures of it where, well, you, yeah. where you see the tourists. We, we had their one. We had one. I mean, it's not. It's not that huge. I mean, you know, I have a fairly big hand, and it would, you know, you'd see it fill up the space pretty well. Okay. But not, it's but not, not, it's not, not enormous. Yeah. You know. but but I yeah, feel like I feel like that, that something about that active it like activates with a particular frequency or a particular resonance, and it's almost like they're looking for the person who has it. So they're hoping right, that all the right, people right. come, come through. Kind of Yeah, like they're you know they're letting all people come through and touch it, and maybe yes. there's only one or maybe a particular family or group of people right. that has some sort of access code in their genetics that know. would activate this. Or, you know, yeah, or it, just, or it could be a collector of some kind, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. I think, so, I think that, but, yeah. But the echoes of the United States are, are very obvious with, the, as Steve was saying, the mall. It feels uh, like the Washington Mall and the whole area around the Smithsonian yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, the, yeah. and, and, you know, the White House and the Capitol Building. Yeah. Is amazing. You'll see. As yeah, we go on. and just uh, maybe quickly, the next one is is what's also up there. The next picture is the um, the so the world. So the other one of the reasons that a lot of people have interest in this place is because the Council of World Religions uh, assembles here, and um, so this is a marker for that. So every three years they show up in the, in the pyramid, which will be the next building we look at. No, no, the, sorry, the Presidential Palace is the next building. Anyway. Um, if you actually can just skip that, but it's just a marker that has has sort of signatories by the leaders of the 17 um, major religions. I don't know, you know, how uh, how who gets to make the grade, but um, but that's it. So, oh, wow. so 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 the so the external story is that you know they're they're coming together in in peace, um, but um, you know is that the case or are they coming together for one world religion? Um, We'll get to where they meet and how that is, and I find it kind of interesting that um, this uh, this uh, half globe that they use is got it's it's obviously an old map, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at it; it's like a you know, it's like looks like it's one of the early. It looks like a Tartarian map, map actually. Well, it yeah. looks like what people are calling Tartarian maps, and yeah. 
Yep. You know, you've got, you know. Which makes you wonder, what are those objects? They look like some sort of stylus or some sort it of It looks key. like a xylophone, like, uh, right? Isn't that instrument? Yeah, but oh, yeah. Pull yeah, them out. Well, yeah, they're just, um, well, they're actually signed, supposedly, by the heads of the religion. But um, I wonder, there's little metal plates on each one. Yeah, they, and they, it, they, it feels they like somebody early. could go... With the with that thing like the go around the xylophone, yeah. Well, it's possible you can, or maybe you can you can you can call the Pope on there or something. We're gonna field trip. Don't <laughs> we'll go. Test it's, it. the, it's the uh, it's the Pope line. So, all right. So 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 th this is another aspect and why people think it's you know it's the you know the Illuminati uh, capital or up and coming capital because of this. But I also find it curious that this. Old globe, and because it, when these maps were made, they didn't have globes. The first globes came around John Dee's time, uh, the Mercator globes. Yeah, when they, yep. Hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting. So, wow. and then the next picture is we can go through that hmm. quickly. That's that's just a, an image I found of of the uh, of this myth that we we're talking about. There's the oh, hero. Oh, the bird and the serpent, and yeah, yeah. Isn't that great. So. Um, the bird looking very, very female, like a mother goddess kind of thing, mm -hmm. and um, and then the serpent underneath, which is made, which is named Bapa, Bapa, I think, is that it? Yeah, I believe so. Bapa, and uh, so the so the and then again is the three worlds: the underground world, where the where the serpents and the uh, the evil lives, and there's the middle world where the humans and the animals, and the upper world where you have the um, you know the uh, the angels and the celestial beings and 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 the birds. Yeah. Wow. So I thought that and was this, nice. And you got that that six pointed star up in the top left. And what's yep. on the right? And that's yep. uh, well, that's a that looks like a solar kind of. It's interesting to me that his hat is a leaf, right? Like uh, like his hand, his hat looks oh, like a yeah. leaf, and I'm Ooh. making me think about like oh. photosynthesis. Right. And light, you know what I mean? And, and like light turning into like, you know, I mean, essentially light turn, turn, turns into food to sugar or whatever. But it's that's just right. interesting that, yeah, that he's, it's like a plant that's out with the uh -huh. bow and arrow. Very much so. Like, so this yeah. looks like just an, a kind of a world tree. Tree kind people. Of thing. Tree exactly. People. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. World exactly. tree plus so. Axis Mundi plus tree of life. So interesting how the serpent is in so many different cultures. It's depicted. Yeah, you know. In the but that looks that looks very dragon-like there. It mm -hmm. does. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Yes, very dragon-like. Yeah. Yes, only the head though. The rest is serpentine. Mm, serpentine. You see some of those kinds of like dragon-looking things in other Asian art. Um, oh boy, we saw them over in. Uh, over in Chiang, uh, Chiang Mai in Thailand. In Thailand and yeah. in Cambodia. It, the, Dragons, it, Nagas, right. they call yeah. them. Right. And, 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 yeah. and, Everywhere. And the um, this kind of gets back to the first thing with the with the, the, the markers on the ground is that the temples in uh, the Angor in the Angor temples in Cambodia, they trace out the constellation Draco, same way as the medieval cathedrals in France trace out the constellation of the Virgin, of Virgo, um, and they were built around the same time, within a couple hundred years of each mm -hmm, other. Mm -hmm. So you know there, and then of course there's, there's you know all the people who looked at Egypt in that way. So um, you know, so it was always this. And so I'm getting it's back to kind of a correspondence between what sits above and what sits below. Exactly. That's yeah. right. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely. That's all this. That's all this is. And yeah. then. Also, the vortices, you know, all throughout the artwork. So in the panther here, you've mm -hmm. got all these incredible vortices. Yeah, I was below. looking at those. All the animals, the antlers. Yeah. yeah. The trees, the leaves, even the serpent. Yeah. You know, you've got oh, the toroidal, ter toroidal. They're toroidal forms, yeah. which yeah. is prime. That's primary. Right. And, that's and, and to get back to the Sanskrit, vritra means world. Um, and and uh, one of the, uh, the the words for uh, in in, yoga, in the yoga system, if Emily might remember, the vrittis is in the yoga sutras. Um, Chitta vritti narod is the cessation of the vrittis, and they're the worlds of the mind, mm -hmm. the, uh, the worlds of worlds of experience, the activities of of thought. They always say, and the Sufis do it the same way. 
So they're, they're considered, yeah, spirals or whirls or, or you and, know. And that's why the Sufis do the, all the whirling dervishes. That's kind why of they do that dance. Right. And, well, and, go ahead. and from what I understand, a lot of that whirling around and the whirling dervish kind of thing is to bring about that uh, vision, visionary state with these sort of sharded, mm -hmm. prismatic looking rainbow visions. Well, in not the only that, but those spinning, spinning, dancing, reels, anything that moves the body in mm -hmm. motion is recalibrating energies in the body itself. Mm -hmm. That's no, why they point. dance. Right. And then the Sufis would have one hand pointing up and one hand pointing down. Even in the Irish step Making the earth to the sky yeah. again. And basically, yeah. basically, you're becoming this, this tree when you're doing that dance. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And the toroidal form, you know, all these vortices, their action is what brings manifestation into being from the unmanifest. So it's that that vor vortex yeah. action. They spin that reality in. into existence, basically. That's right. Yeah. Very interesting. So I can move on to the next building as we go zipping along. Yeah, I'm not zipping tour. along here. The software sometimes doesn't cooperate. Let's see right, that's okay. Here. So this is the Accorda Presidential Palace, um, which, uh, as Chris was saying, looks like a combination of the White House and the Capitol building. And this is um, also, um, and we'll, we'll get to that picture, this also has the 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 what looks like the masonic towers wow look at that isn't it incredible so, but the yeah blue. i got this one out because of look the color the blue. The blue, really yeah. quite beautiful right so the colors of the flag so so the main colors in astana or kazakhstan also are the gold yeah and and the, and the blue or the yellowish gold and this, and this, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a cobalt blue. Look at all those reflective lapis. surfaces, too. They're not normal windows. Those right. reflective surfaces are That's incredible. right. Yeah. Reflecting the sky. It's like right. the disco ball at the top of the last building we looked at sort of thing. And right. on both of them, the reflective surface, sur surfaces are broken into little square pa box pattern. Yeah, right. and so, I don't know. Can you zoom in, Andy, uh, Randy, on that door? The, the door. The red door. door. Yeah. I thought it was red, and the other day we did this, and then I thought, well, maybe it it's like a, like a mahogany or I don't know, Unless some it's, kind it could of be wood. Copper. It could be copper. Could be copper, yeah. It's hard to say, but again, it's that, that color. Yeah, the resolution on the picture doesn't lend itself. It doesn't yeah. look reddish. Yeah. It's either some sort of deep hardwood or it's wood. copper. Yeah. yeah. It does look kind of copper. Yeah. So this, it might make sense. So this building is, uh, has seven floors, which is, again, we talked about the seven of stages course. of initiation. Yeah. All right? and, and as we said, you've got the, the very similar portico as the White House has. Yeah. And I don't know if it's the same number of columns or not. And then, and then the Capitol building. So it's a, it seems like it's designed intentionally as a, as a combination Looks like there's eight of those columns. Two buildings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So uh, an octave on the front. All right. And it's um it's two hundred and sixty-four feet. That's high. a very specific shade of blue. And it yeah. grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. It's actually called cerulean blue. Cerulean. Yeah. Very okay. good. Very good. Yeah. It caught my eye because I you know, I'm somewhat familiar with color matching and I'm very color sensitive. That one just leaped out at me. Okay. That's cerulean blue. I have a color. I have colored pencils that are that color. I like. It, mm -hmm. There's a certain mm -hmm. feeling. A certain yeah, there's like, an energy to it. That's the, our it, synesthesia certain... kicks in with that yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and I growing up, I, we were too poor. I could only have like 32 Crayola crayons. I could <laughs> no. never afford. Oh. You know, you never got periwinkle. You just gotta learn how to blend. <laughs> no, I could never, you know, try to figure out the difference between burnt umber and burnt sienna. You know. <laughs> When I come when I, when I come visit, I'll let you use my cerulean blue colored pencil, Steve. Can oh, I, can would I? you, Emily? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> we can color sacred geometry pictures with the cerulean yeah, blue. The color. color actually, it's interesting because cerulean, when you etymologically trace it back, actually means the color of heaven or heaven's sky. I was just gonna say, there's something very like relaxing, heavenly, right, right, otherworldly right. about like, that. Yeah. yeah. 
and yeah. the word right. ceiling. Right. And again, this is nomadic people, their connection to the sky, and of course their deity would have been a sky deity. Mm -hmm. And that's of the course, color of yeah. the sky deity. Yeah, and they got so there. If you wanna, if you and wanna another start, ball, another little ball at the top. That's right. what I wanted mm -hmm. to see. The gold, the, another gold disco ball. Right, right, held up there. So, uh, and, and the next picture shows it more in, in the context of the mall, and this is the picture that gets um, everybody um, looking at the, uh, the Masonic aspect of it, all right? So there you have these two unbelievable gold. It does gold. look like TC. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. TC? DC. Oh, DC. Yeah. 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 So, you know, so you've got uh, Boaz and uh, Wak Yarkum. Yarkum. Mm -hmm. uh there. And, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too. So the, 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 the building itself is um, 792 hands. So if you convert the feet into hands, you get 792. And so again, this goes, and then, so this uh, building runs back to the, the, the new Jerusalem um, foundation because um, the the uh, twelve thousand furlongs of each side of the right Temple. each each side of the, each side of the city right is seven, is twelve thousand furlongs, and that uh, comes out to seven hundred ninety two thousand feet. So the number seven ninety two, the height of the building, is um, is resonant with the, um, the the size of the new New Jerusalem walls, I guess. If I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, I'm trying to, you know. And, and again, look at those on the gold towers there, the square reflective sur surfaces, right? The little mm -hmm. boxes, it's like pixelation. It's like everything there is pixelated. Yes. I can't, you know what I mean? There's just squares everywhere. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But, but I guess they're windows. Um, right, but they're, you know, but it's got that very. prominent. Yeah, that super disco ball, that super, like, you know, remember those, like, light-up floors they had at discos yes. in the 70s? Yeah. Like, it makes me think of that. Um, mm -hmm. But then the, the the points on the top are interesting, too. Mm -hmm. um, it seems as though everything has points on the top. Yeah. It's like everything oh, has an antenna, right. an antenna yeah. or a spire or a dome or a, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um yeah, and so the next one is just a little further back, which kind of, uh, which which shows how it connects with um, the, the um, floor. so it's kind of got you know, more squares. An echo of the Masonic Masonic floors. Yep. Um, and again, so you just kind of a little pull back from that. That and, almost uh, looks to me like if you were looking at that from up above, that that's some sort of like code. Right, mm -hmm. like some sort of coding, or like you know how instead of barcodes now they have those squares with all the designs in them, and you hold your phone over it right. and you scan it. Right. It looks right. like it's also yeah, something like that. It. Like you could read that from the sky up above for information. Yeah, right. it's also reminiscent of I Ching. Yeah, not exactly, but yeah. reminiscent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if you can go or circuit board, circuit and board. Then, well, the whole city looks like a, a you know a high end computer. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah right, that's right, right, right. right. And Maybe it's a quantum computer. No, right? you're gonna, Emily, you're you going to see that there's not a lot of people in these pictures, and and really for the up until really the last five years, almost nobody lived in this city. They built it, and then and then it now it apparently has well, you know a couple million people or nine one million nine hundred thousand. One like of that. the things I was going to say was that, and I've looked probably at this point at upward between 500 and a thousand pictures of Astana and there's you almost never see people in any of the yeah. pictures yeah right. and so today I was like well do any people actually live there and I right. went and I looked up uh re real estate and rentals and things like that in mm -hmm. Astana and you wouldn't believe how nice of an apartment you can get in Astana for like under a thousand dollars Right, right, like it, like you would not. Like, the kind of apartment that you could get for a thousand dollars there would be between four and six thousand dollars anywhere in Los Angeles, San Francisco, or New York. Oh, seriously, right. yeah. Well, so, because, yeah, go ahead. There's uh, my, my, you know, like that's the whatever numbers they're saying live there. I don't even think it's that many. I think they're desperate for people to come live there, and the apartments are very weird, right? They're very modern looking in some rooms, and then very almost old Soviet or Russian looking in other rooms. It's like a weird juxtaposition huh. of modernity and like weird, like an old an old Russian woman decorated it or something like that. Huh. They're very odd. Um, okay, so the fake, yeah. This takes me into a weird headspace here. 
so I was reading earlier, and I lost the, the, the reference, but it may have even been in the Wikipedia article, that they were attempting to attract Kazakhs back to this area mm -hmm. that they had been displaced off. Obviously, a lot of them were killed off in, 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 by, by the USSR over, over you know, the pogroms and purges that occurred. It gets me wondering, are they framing this that perhaps this bloodline is some sort of, quote, chosen people? Or, kind of like trying to get all the Jews to go back to Israel? Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah uh, mm -hmm. it's not lost well, on me. This is Kazakhstan. And, you know, when we go back and we look at even the Khazars, etymologically, I have to wonder how close all of this is. Oh, very this interesting. Is, yeah. If this isn't some hint at a mm -hmm. root race yeah. that they're trying to assemble. Well, because yeah. remember... Well, that, that, that's actually what the 144,000 is in the Bible. Yes, the root race. Mm -hmm. The gathering of the tribes. Right. So, yeah, go so ahead. I mean, I don't want to, I didn't want to throw too many wild seeds okay. into the field there, but. No, no why not? That's because we're here for. really hit me. Can you bring right. back that Masonic picture next to, because we, we got off on yeah. something else. Sure, yeah, no, yeah. So, Randy, are you, are you feeling like it's, it's an attractor for that group? Is that what is in going through your mind? That's what I'm suspecting. It's right. like yeah. Yeah. what they yeah. did to populate what we call Israel now. You notice that there was a great effort to do that. That's in, is, Israel was basically carved out of right. Palestine. There was really not much there. So, some of the things that I'm going to talk about when we get into the light and color section uh, go into this uh, attractor quality. I was thinking of it from a different perspective than what Randy is, but uh, actually you could tie them together and it makes sense. It's almost like, yeah, like an attractor beam. Like there's something about this place that is trying to call, you know, call people towards it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But, but very right. good, Randy. So, so then the question, yeah, so then the question is... Certain people, you, call certain people. Well, the question right. is, right, so is, is this not necessarily... Um, you know, a, uh, a genetic bloodline, let's say. I, I couldn't come up with a better word. You know, but another kind for this new a world soul group? order. You mean a soul group? Or? I'm not sure. But or, or a, words, hybrid yes, kind of, a hybrid kind of bloodline? Well, I or... agree that, well because, because and, and maybe this will get back to when I try to uh, go to the, um, through the chakras, because, the ch because I think they're trying to create a new kind of person under, under this new world order. And, and what I want to show how that, I agree with that. This, that's pretty, this, yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, that's All right, that's and also are they looking for a synthesis of East and West because yes. there's heavy influence of the United States in here in yes. the architecture. I mean, it's, it's like their prominent feature. The but presidential you Remember power. too that a lot of the Masonic, Masonic aspects that we, we connote now to the United States were actually brought out of the Egyptian traditions via Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. So the Eastern yeah, tradition was brought into the Western tradition. And I mean, yeah. you go look at, mm -hmm. go look at Masonic lodges. Um, you will see Egypt all over it. You mm -hmm. will see Eastern influences all over it. Mm -hmm. So but, there already is that synthesis in place. By the way, this, this picture here, that portal into that temple has the yeah. cerulean blue again. It's blue, yeah. yeah. It's it not is. the black and white floor in front of it, but it's a blue oh, and white floor. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. Well, for right. them, that's for yeah. them. The blue and the gold are the master master kind of colors. So yeah. Ding okay. ding ding. Um, I'm I'm looking at it and thinking it's well with the Muslim sages with this sage Surahwardi from the Illumination Group. It, he was bringing back where there was a split going from Plato and Aristotle. So those Aristotelian logical perspectives as opposed to the spiritual perspectives of Plato were split. And then Surahwardi was bringing those back into a synthesis. And he was also from that area, well, he was not right, here, but... Right, he was right across the Caspian Sea from the border of, of Kazakhstan. And you have to remember in the, uh, from, from around 800 to... 
12, 1300, this was the learning center of the world. Mm -hmm. All the cities in Central Asia and, were, you know, where Dark Ages were here, or in there, Europe. There so was this the original... Two suns here. What, what's, what's up with that? One looks masculine, one looks feminine. Well, that's, that's the sun and the moon. Right, okay. So I, that, yeah. I have, that, that looks exact, that sun looks exactly like a tattoo I have on my back, and the other one looks exactly like a tattoo my best friend during the later years of my gymnastics time had it had. Right. Kind of interesting. And I never really looked at it, but the mm -hmm. sun on the right has, you know, has that like a, um, a curved blades, and the other ones has straight blades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But going back to Surawati, so that original knowledge came from Egypt. And it went, it went out to Persia, and it went out to uh, Greece. And in, it was in Greece that then it, the split occurred with Plato and Aristotle. And then that Aristotelian logic came in to the West. And with Surahwati, he was bringing those two back. So that's why I'm wondering, is there some effort afoot if they're thinking of this one world religion that they want to create mm -hmm. only it would i don't feel like it would be as pure a motive as sir Hardy had no no so his motives were more pure but it feels like what's coming afoot with this is more materialistic what are with the letters on the base of those pillars yeah. out front there's, there's like a backward c and a b no that's 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 the j and a b for, for oh, the j oh. For what is it? That for Boaz for. and Joachim. Oh, Joachim and Boaz. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, okay. So are we? We're, we've been going for about an hour now. So I'm already uh -oh. thinking maybe. <laughs> well, I'm already thinking we'll take this over into the second hour, and we may have to come back and do a part two oh, on oh, the oh. color and light. You think? What do you think, Randy? Yeah. Yeah, that's worth revisiting under, yeah, uh, if not this title, some other, uh, a lot of inter interesting things going on there. So we're going to wrap up the, the first hour here. You can yep. find us over at patreon.com forward slash off planet media for the this second hour. This is off planet radio. Patreon. We really appreciate you to everyone else. Come and join us there. We'll see you on the other side. All right, thanks.
That's going to wrap it up for now, patrons. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being there. Look forward to seeing you again on the next show. Truth is out there, and it is astonishing. Absolutely. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good night.